howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing tutorials. Today I'm going to show you a really useful and easy knot called the non-slip loop knot. Now this is a knot that I use a lot and I know that a lot of our guides and the folks that we fish with use this knot as well. Um, and anytime I'm fishing a streamer, uh, for that matter a bass bug, saltwater, uh, a lot of extent pike and musky flies uh, I'm using this non-slip loop knot and as opposed to the clinch knot which is the other knot I've shown you and any of you that have worked with me know that when I'm fishing dries or nymphs I'm tying a clinch knot pretty much otherwise it's a non-slip loop and what the non-slip loop does is it allows the fly okay to have a little more movement um, it's, it's not jammed up against that clinch knot and just kind of straight pull. That fly has little freedom to move, and, and especially with a streamer. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite flies, uh, the Swimmy Jimmy. I fish this thing for bass, I fish it for redfish, I fish it for trout. The Swimmy Jimmy is absolutely one of my favorite flies of all times. And if you tie a Swimmy Jimmy on a clinch knot, it's boring. It doesn't do anything. You tie it on a loop knot and it's wiggling all over the place. The action on that fly is like nothing nothing you've ever seen and uh, it just slaughters fish. We'll talk more about that later. But So real quick, this is really simple. I'm going to tie it with this uh, bright yellow fly line so you can see it first and then I'll tie it with the mono. But you tie an overhand knot in your tippet. You li literally just tie a simple overhand knot and then you're going to come through the eye of the fly. Oh, you know what I forgot? Yeah, there we go. My most important piece of gear. Many of you have seen the click glasses that I wear in all of our YouTube videos. And I got to tell you, they're my single most important piece of gear. Our YouTube channel, Mad River Outfitters, the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, None of it would be possible without click glasses. Simply the smartest design there is. They fold up and out of the way when I don't need them. They click together like butter when I do. Click glasses, of course, as you can imagine, available at madriveroutfitters.com. Whoa, there we go. My most important piece of gear. So you've tied your overhand knot, you've come through the eye of the fly, and now insert your tippet up and through that overhand knot. And right here, this is where you can kind of adjust the size of your loop, because now I'm simply gonna wrap the tag end of my tippet around the standing end, and I go around five times. I'll just do it three times with this thick fly line because it makes it hard to see. And now all you do is come back down and through that original overhand loop that you made. Boom, you sent it down, and there's your non-slip loop. A lot of times I'll have to come in with my thumb and my index and kind of jam that up, up against itself, jam it tight, and there you go. You trim it, and your non-slip loop knot. And you see that allows the fly to move around more freely. It's going to give it more action. Okay. So let's uh, let me do this with the monofilament, just for fun. And this time I'll go ahead and wrap around five times. Now I do it five times. I've seen some guys that only do it three, even with monofilament. I just do it five times. So you tie your overhand knot. Um, you've heard me say this before. One of the secrets to good knot tying uh, is to leave yourself plenty of tag in to work with. And so I come now I take the tippet through the eye of the fly. I'm going to come up and through that original overhand knot that I tied. And again, this is where you can kind of set the size of your loop. And then I'm going to come around five times. And then take your tippet the tag into the tippet and come down and through that original overhand knot. Make sure you keep the size of that loop intact. And as with most knots, you pull on the standing end only, and I'll just kind of use my thumb and my index finger to make sure that it seats right and jams down on there. And there you go. 
the non-slip loop knot. Really pretty simple, but uh, this is probably the knot that I use most often uh, for most of the fishing that I do. One thing uh, to make note of is make sure that this loop is not longer than your hook shank. If that loop is larger, is longer than the length of your hook shank, you can run the risk of the hook actually coming up and getting caught in that loop. You don't want that to happen, okay? So just make sure that the length of the loop is less than your hook shank. You should be good to go. Non-slip loop knot, give it a try. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching as always. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. We got a lot more coming.